Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and hello and welcome to all to Biosciences with Shatrin Sawati. Today I will deliver the lecture from my uh, biochemistry series and this lecture is about the protein as you can see here on the screen. I will deliver the lecture about the proteins today and I have delivered uh, almost two lectures about carbohydrates from this series. So before starting my lecture, I have a humble request to all of you. If you did not subscribe my channel, kindly subscribe my channel and like my videos and share my videos. So all the students hold on your notebook and uh, your pen and pencil and note down all the important information which I'm going to giving you in this lecture. So uh, as we know that proteins are the most important part of the food and also uh, provide the structure to the cell as well as the whole living organism. So uh, in this lecture, I will discuss about the history, biosynthesis, structure of amino acids, structure of proteins, classification and then function so first of all what are protein basically and who discovered the protein it is very important to know that the protein derived from the greek word protus meaning primary uh, in the lead are standing in front molder went on to identify the products of protein degradation first time the Mulder, a scientist who identified the products of protein degradation such as the amino acid leucine for which he named a, a nearly correct a molecular weight of what 131 Dalton. Prior to protein other names were used like albumin, Albumin is material. Albumin, this is the most important familiar protein, which is the egg white protein we take in our daily uh, breakfast in the form of the egg. Okay. The uh, total complement, or you can say that the total amount of the protein in the cells or cell type is known as proteome. Total amount of protein in the cell or the cell type is known as proteome and the study of the proteome is known as proteomics must keep it in your mind the study of the proteome is known as proteomics and what is proteomic proteome the proteome is the total amount of the or the to uh, total complement of the protein present at a time in a cell or cell type so this word uh, analogy to the um, related field of genomics like genomics is the study of the genome Proteomics is the study of the proteome. Okay. Now, who discovered first time the protein? Protein was first time mm, discovered by the Dutch scientist uh, Jaredus Johannes Molder, and the second one is the Swedish chemist Johns Jacob on the right side in 1838. On the right side, you can see the Jacob and on the left side of me, you can see the Mulder who discovered the first amino acid, leucine, protein. And this is all about the little bit about the history of the protein. Now I'm going to discuss about the biosynthesis of proteins. Biosynthesis of protein is actually the central dogma. We all are familiar with the central dogma transcription and translation. Transcription is the formation of the messenger RNA in the nucleus of the cell from the DNA and then this messenger RNA brings the message for the formation of the protein. So when this messenger RNA enter into the cytoplasm then what will happen the message of the messenger RNA is translated into the proteins and the transfer RNA present in the cytoplasm read the message of the messenger RNA and brings the amino acids to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm and also the endoplasmic reticulum, a rough type of endoplasmic reticulum in case of the eukaryotes but in case of the prokaryote uh, on the ribosomes, protein synthesized on the ribosome in the cytoplasm but in case of the eukaryote both in the cytoplasm as well as on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so what will happen? The um, uh, amino acids are picked up by the transfer RNA and transfer RNA uh, then uh, uh, when uh, bring the amino, amino acids to the uh, 
uh, ribosomes, then what will happen? A chain of the amino acid is produced. That chain is known as the polypeptide, and that polypeptide is the protein. Is it clear to you? Polypeptide chain is produced at the ribosome, and that polypeptide chain is known as the uh, protein, and that is formed by the uh, reaction of uh, or the combination of what amino acids. Now, how the amino acid uh, form bond with each other? And which type of bond is present in the amino acid? Like uh, I have discussed in detail about the glycosidic bond in case of the uh, carbohydrates, like disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides. So here, in case of the uh, proteins, which type of bond is present? Poly uh, peptidic bond. Now I will show you which type of and how the peptide bond is found in between the two amino acids, adjacent amino acids. So now I'm going to discuss about the structure. So in the structure, I will show you the uh, pep uh, peptide bond. Okay. So this is, first of all, uh, it is uh, important to know the structure of the amino acid. Amino acid consists of uh, four groups. As you can see here, this is the central carbon. This is complete structure of the amino acid. This is the central carbon, alpha carbon. And on both sides, on all the sides, in four sides of this car carbon valency is four. So uh, this carbon can bond with four other group. So four other group, one is hydrogen, one is carboxylic acid group. This carboxylic acid group uh, actually give the name amino acid. And amino is derived from the word, this amino group. On one side amino group is present, on one side carboxylic group is present, and on one side hydrogen is present. And there is another group which is different in different amino acid and that is alkyl group. This R group is different in different amino acids, but these uh, uh, three groups, hydrogen, um, uh, amino group, and carboxylic group remain same in all the amino acids. Is it clear to you? How many groups are present in one amino acid? Four. This alkyl, only just one uh, alkyl group is different in different amino acids. Now, how the bond is produced are formed between the two amino acids and that bond is known as peptide bond. You can see here the two amino acids bond with each other. So, the peptide bond is the bond which is formed between the carboxylic acid of one amino acid and the amino group of the other amino acid. Now you can see here one, two, three amino acids are present and two peptide bond is present. One, two. So the peptide bond is formed between amino group of one amino acid and the carboxy group of the other. Now this is this polypeptide chain produced by the mechanism of condensation. We are familiar with condensation. During condensation, uh, one water molecule release. Like in case of the glycosidic bond, so must watch my lecture about the carbohydrate. You will uh, then see and, and understand the concept of the glycosidic bond. So in the case, sorry, in case of the polypeptide uh, bond, uh, hydrogen uh, atom removed from the amino group and hydroxyl group removed from the carboxylic acid. So one hydroxyl group which is removed from the carboxylic acid are from one amino acid and hydrogen from the other amino acid from the water molecule. So water molecule release, I will show you here. You can see here uh, how this is the carboxyl group of one amino acid and this is the amino group of other. So uh, hydrogen from here, OH from here releases and produces the water and the bond is formed between two adjacent amino acid that is known as the peptide bond. The concept is clear now? I hope so. Okay, now I will show you how the peptide bond is formed and how uh, which sort of uh, peptide bond is. This is rigid and planar. You can see this is what? This is rigid and planar and how it is formed. This is formed between the two amino acid, one carboxylic group and one amino group. Okay. Now the four uh, levels of protein structures. There are four levels of protein structure. You can see, uh, first one is the primary structure. This is the primary structure. This primary structure actually produce at the level of ribosome. Now the next one is the secondary 
uh, structure, secondary structure is produced by the uh, bonding of the primary structure. So now the secondary sec structure gives rise to the tertiary structure, further bonding, which, uh, other bond like uh, along with the uh, or beside the peptide bond there are hydrogen bond, uh, ionic bond and vulnerable forces, hydrophobic, hydrophobic hydrophilic type of bonds uh, further produced and further formed between the chains of the polypeptide uh, linear or you can say the primary then secondary then the tertiary and then tertiary form the uh, quaternary is it clear okay now i will discuss one by one so first of all the primary structure this structure as i have told you that produced at the level of the uh, ribosome this is linear structure and a simple chain okay now the secondary structure the secondary structure produced by the hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding between the opposite uh, polypeptide chains which are the primary polypeptide chains primary structure between the primary structure like alpha helix and beta sheets maybe so the uh, by hydrogen bonding they join with each other as you can see here this is the secondary structure of the proteins now uh, and these are the alpha helix and these are the beta sheets and you can see the parallel arrangement and anti-parallel arrangement. So the concept about the anti-parallel arrangement is that uh, anti-parallel beta sheets are more stable. Anti-parallel arrangement of the beta sheets, polypeptide chains, you can say that these uh, sheets uh, arrangement provide the anti-parallel arrangement provide the stability to the protein structure. Okay. Now first, uh, the third one is the tertiary structure. This refers to the overall three-dimensional arrangement of its uh, polypeptide chains in space. It is generally stabilized by outside polar hydrophilic hydrogen and ionic bonds. On the outside, there is what, uh, which sort of bond is present? Hydrogen bond and ionic bond. And the hydrogen bond, ionic bonds are uh, hydrophilic. Or inside of the uh, tertiary structure there is a hydrophobic bond which sort of interaction hydrophobic bond between the non polar amino acid side chains is it clear so this is the tertiary structure which is produced from the uh, uh, primary or secondary uh, structures uh, joining and rejoining okay now you can see here now quaternary structure this is the association of the several protein chains or subunits into a closely packed arrangement. Each of the subunit has its own primary, secondary, and tertiary structure. The subunits are held together by the hydrogen bonding and vulnerable forces between non polar side chains. So, this is the concept about the uh, primary structure, secondary structure, how the primary structure give rise to the secondary, secondary, give, uh, primary, secondary give rise to the tertiary and then the quaternary structure okay now i'm moving towards the classification and you will see in case of the protein different classification students mostly confused about the classification of the proteins now i will clear the concept how the proteins are classified sometime protein classification depends upon the number of the uh, polypeptide chains sometime it depends upon the shape of the proteins and uh, uh, some scientists uh, classified it on the proteins on the basis of what uh, different types of molecules attached with them. Now, first of all, uh, monomeric protein and the multimeric proteins. Monomeric proteins are those proteins which consist of only one peptide chain. Must keep it in your mind. Mono mean one. So, monomeric consists of only one protein chain. Multimeric proteins uh, will consist of more than one polypeptide chain. Now, concept is clear. So, multimeric is further divided into homo multimeric and heteromultimeric. Now, what is homo? Homo means same multimeric. All the polypeptide chains are, uh, are uh, uh, one kind, are same kind. So, uh, the heteromeric in which two or more different chains are present. Like the example of hemoglobin. In hemoglobin, this is a heteromeric molecule. In this case, what will happen? Two alpha chains and two beta chains are present. 
So this is heteromeric. Uh, this is the best example of the heteromeric. Uh, or, uh, to understand the uh, con concept of the heteromeric and uh, monomeric uh, proteins chains. Okay. Now, depending on the uh, shape of the proteins, there are two types, fibrous proteins and globular proteins. You can see here on the screen the differences between the fibrous and globular protein and you can also consider it as a characteristics of the fibrous protein and globular protein. This classification, uh, this classification depends on the uh, shape of the protein. So, fibrous proteins, these are thread-like, fibers-like strands or sheets and uh, they are insoluble in water and strong but flexible and structurally the uh, structure proteins fibrous proteins are structural mostly and keratin protein collagen protein you are familiar with the keratin present here nail skin collagen present in the uh, skin as well as in the bones and cartilage and many more so globular proteins polypeptide chains folded into spherical or globular form Globular shape or spherical shape. They are water soluble, contain several types of the secondary structures, diverse function perform. perform. Globular protein perform the diverse function, means different function. Like you can say that uh, some act as a regulatory protein, some act as a catalyst. So their function is diverse, but the fibrous proteins, they are structure and functional are the proteins are the globular protein. So the concept clear about the globular and fibrous protein, you can solve your question and also the MCQs depending on the basis of the differences between the fibrous and globular protein. Now, uh, I, I hope so the concept will be clear upon you people. So protein classification depend on the presence of the other uh, molecule with the protein like simple, simple composed of only uh, amino acid residues. Okay, simple composed of only amino acid, but the conjugated are those like conjugated molecule. I have discussed in detail about the conjugated like glycolipids, glycoproteins. So here uh, we are discussing the proteins. So proteins are present in the form of the glycoproteins, um, lipoproteins, so many metal ions, cofactors attached with the uh, what? With the protein. Like in the case of the hemoglobin, heme group is attached with the globin protein. Is it clear? Okay, heme iron. Iron is attached with the globin protein. Okay. Now, diseases caused by the changes in the protein. There are many more, but I am uh, giving you uh, just example of the sickle cell anemia, which you are familiar with it, and the osteoarthritis. So, in case of the sickle cell anemia, single amino acid uh, chain, uh, single amino acid uh, in case of the uh, hemoglobin, what will happen? The amino acid 1, valine, replaced by the glutamic acid. In the chain of the, in chain, beta chain of the hemoglobin, what will happen? Single amino acid is replaced. And that uh, replaceable uh, amino acid is valine. Instead of valine, glutamic acid is present. So you can say that the valine is replaced by the glutamic acid and the structure of the hemoglobin chain. So other is the osteoarthritis in which also the single amino acid change in collagen protein causes joint damage. The concept clear now? Okay. Now protein function, that is very important. Proteins perform the diverse function. Many more, like, and they act as a regulatory, a switch on and switch off the uh, genes in the nucleus. And uh, I have discussed about the regulation of the gene. So must watch uh, my lecture about the regulation of the gene. So the other is structural, like the in hairs, in nails, in skin, in cell membranes, and in case of the organelle membranes, these proteins are present. Similarly, movement, they play a very important role. In the uh, cell membrane, there are many more proteins which help in the uh, uh, transport of the material from outside to inside and from inside to in outside of the cell. And as a catalyst, we are familiar with that uh, function. Uh, all the proteins, uh, all the enzymes, uh, act, uh, are protein in nature and, and they uh, play a very important role in metabolic activities. Signaling proteins help in the signaling of the cells, cell communication and many more. Okay, so you can see all here 
uh, all the functions of the protein one by one, by one as a catalyst like enzymes, structural keratin and collagens, transport, hemoglobin like hemoglobin is a protein uh, which transport oxygen, uh, transmembrane tra uh, uh, proteins are also present like sodium, potassium, ATPase, uh, toxins like in the form of the resin which is the rattle snack venom and uh, similarly contractile functions like actin and myosin in the muscles hormones insulin um, play a very important role in the regulation of the uh, blood sugar similar storage proteins seeds and egg uh, defective proteins antibodies is it clear to you okay i hope so the lecture will be clear upon you people if you have any question write in the write in the comment box and thank you very much thank you very much uh, i will be awake and like my videos share my video till then allah hafiz